Our group was responsible for the superior medi mediastinum, and to get to the superior mediastinum, we had to take off the anterior thoracic wall. Um, so that's this here. And we're going to start with the costochondral junction, which joins the ribs to this cartilage here, and then um, attaches the sternum to the ribs through the um, cartilage. And it is a mostly cartilaginous joint, and there normally shouldn't be movement. Um, and then if we turn over to the posterior portion of the anterior thoracic wall, we have the costal pleura here, um, and underneath that, the endothoracic fascia, which separates the costal, the costal pleura from the muscles underneath. And then over here on this side, we have the anterior, or no, the internal thoracic <laughs> arteries and veins, um, the artery being more lateral and the vein being more medial. The artery receives blood from the subclavian artery and I'm not sure what you're doing. <laughs> And then um, it disperses oxygenated blood to the epi superior epigastric artery and the musculophrenic um, artery. And it also um, brings oxygenated blood through the intercostal spaces um, to the anterior intercostal artery. The vein um, brings deoxygenated blood from the anterior intercostal veins between each intercostal space um, and it brings it back to the right brachiocephalic vein and back to the superior vena cava um, and then the internal thoracic arteries and vein also supply the anterior portion of the thoracic wall by the um, anterior perforating artery and veins. And that supplies and takes blood away from the um, pec muscles and the skin of the anterior thoracic wall. External intercostal muscles, which are more lateral compared to the sternum. They're over here. They run with the hands in the pocket. I have two probes. <laughs> and then it, as it goes more medial, it becomes the external intercostal membrane, which is the more shiny sheath. Um, running the opposite direction are the internal intercostal muscles right here. You can see them as well on the posterior side of the anterior thoracic wall right here. The innermost intercostal muscles are best seen on the anterior side of the posterior thoracic wall not the posterior side of the anterior thoracic wall, but they run in a more longitudinal way up and down. Um, they originate, all the muscles originate, of the intercostal muscles originate on the inferior side of the superior rib and insert onto the superior side of the inferior rib. Um, you have the transversus thoracis, which originates on the sternum. Here's part of it. It inserts, originates on the sternum and inserts onto the ribs at the costochondral junction. So now moving to the superior mediastinum, the great vessels coming off of the heart. We have the aorta and the aortic arch. Coming off of that, we have the arteries, which are the uh, brachiocephalic. The common, that's of the right side, the common carotid on the left side, and the, and the left subclavian artery. Here we have blood returning to the heart in the superior vena cava. Here's the trachea. Posterior to that is the esophagus. Connecting the aorta to the pulmonary trunk is the ligamentum arteriosum. Here's the pulmonary trunk right here. 
tucked underneath the aortic arch. Inferior to the pulmonary trunk are the pulmonary arteries. Did I miss anything? Pulmonary veins! <laughs> Pulmonary arteries are, to, are above the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary arteries are leaving the heart, carrying deoxygenated blood. The pulmonary veins are coming to the heart, carrying oxygenated blood. Forgive me. So um, now we're going to look at some of the vessels on the right side of the mediastinum. And so uh, most evident here is the, um, the veins that are returning deoxygenated blood to the heart from the head. So we have here the internal jugular that you can't see it so well here, but you'd have to imagine the subclavian vein and the internal jugular meet at the venous angle here. The subclavian returning deoxygenated blood from the shoulder and arm. The internal jugular returning it from the head and neck. They join in the right brachial cephalic trunk and move inward to the superior vena cava. Just posterior you have the arteries, the large arteries, you have the common carotid, lies most anterior to the um, trachea, and it joins at the brachiocephalic artery with the subclavian artery. You can see it down below there. So they make a, a, a angular joint here. <laughs> um, Again, this is oxygenated blood supplying the head. This is oxygenated blood supplying the shoulder and arm. Okay, and now we're going to look at the nerves. We have three nerves we want to look at. So if we work most medially, there is something called the right recurrent laryngeal. It actually is a branch off of the vagus nerve, which we'll look at in a moment. It loops underneath the subclavian artery and works its way to innervate the larynx. You probably want to see it from this side here because you can see it. And it's going to help out with our voice and the swallowing. It actually innervates between the space of the trachea and the esophagus that lies superior, I'm sorry, inferior or posterior to the trachea. Uh, so the vagus nerve here, the vagus nerve is the next nerve, and it uh, leaves the spinal nerve um, 10, and it's the longest nerve in our body, and it will travel deeply and um, innervate areas of the heart, innervate areas of the lung and the lung plexus and the esophagus, and um, I think it's part of the you know, autonomic nervous system, and it's going to be um, parasympathetic. So rest and digest. Lastly, we're going to look at here the phrenic nerve, which leaves the uh, spinal nerves three, four, and five, and attach or run along the pericardium to the diaphragm and help in respiration. It's almost the same. The right side has a brachiocephalic trunk. The left side <sighs> Left yeah. and right wrong. <laughs> no, that's all right. And then the left side has a common carotid that comes right off the arch of the aorta. The common carotid is right here. It inner it supplies oxygenated blood to the head and neck. Um, inferior to that, you have the subclavian artery that arch comes off the arch of the aorta, and it runs posterior. Uh, it got a little cut up, but here's. Part of it, it supplies oxygenated blood to the arm. You can tell how thick the uh, artery is in comparison to the vein, how thin the wall of the vein is right here. Um, you have the brachiocephalic trunk vein that gives takes deoxygenated blood from the arm and the head and returns it to the superior vena cava. The brachiocephalic trunk is made up of the inter internal jugular vein, which is uh, bigger than the internal jugular vein.
the external muscular vein. It takes blood, deoxygenated blood from the head and neck. You have the external jugular vein, which is a bit smaller than the internal jugular vein. And then also the subclavian vein got cut, but it comes over here and is anterior to the subclavian artery. You also have the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. The difference between the left and the right side is that the left lip goes underneath the arch of the aorta into the ligamentum arteriosum and arches under behind posterior to the arch of the aorta. Uh, the recurrent laryngeal nerve comes from the vagus nerve right here which is cranial nerve number 10. You have the phrenic nerve, which comes from cervical nerves 3, 4, and 5, and innervates the diaphragm. You have the thoracic duct, which we just have the portion that it's kind of hard to see. It's right there. Um, that receives lymph from three quarters of the body, the lower limbs and the upper left side of the body. And that will dump lymph into the venous angle of the internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein, taking that through the brachiosynthetic vein to the superior vena cava. Same happens on the other side, but we don't have the right thoracic duct to show.